I found A-level biology to be a really interesting subject and although I enjoyed it there was a lot of content and some very specific annoying mark schemes. So in this video I want to share with you all of the tips and methods that I use to get an A-star in A-level biology. Hi everyone, welcome back or if you're new welcome to my channel Raina on the Cusp, my name is Raina and a quick bit of background about me. I did maths, chemistry and biology A-levels back in 2017 and now I'm in my fourth year of dentistry at the University of Sheffield. So if you do like this video, which I really hope you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We are almost at a thousand subscribers, which absolutely blows my mind. So thank you so much to every single one of you that has watched, liked, commented, subscribed. It really does mean a lot. Anyways, let's get straight into it. So tip number one is to use the specification. I'm sure if you've gone searching for other A-level biology videos, you will have already heard everyone else say this, but it really is so, so important. So I had to include it. The specification shows you exactly what you need to learn in biology, how much depth you need to go into when you're going to learn it so in AS or A level and it just acts as a great reference point to have with you at all times. Before my first lesson of biology I downloaded the spec had it printed off, um, yeah, I was that person. I had it ready to go, ready to annotate in class, but it was really useful because I was able to match up what we were learning in the lesson to exactly where it was in the spec and how many more topics we had left to cover as well. I was also the year group that did the new AQA specifications from 2017, so it was an absolute must for me to have this document printed off um, and ready to refer from it. I personally found as well that the way topics are worded in the spec are often the way that they want you to write about it in exams. So pay careful attention to how things are said and how things are written in the specification. And the way that I would annotate my spec is that, for example, if it says something like the definition of an antibody, once we had covered that in class, I would write that piece of information in. And over time, the spec became a little bit of a guide for me to use as well. So you can find the specification online with a quick Google search and this is the AQA one because that's the exam board that I did and you can see as well it gives you the maths requirements and the practical assessments as well which I will speak a little bit about later on in this video. So the next thing that I did as well as using the AQA specification is using lots of different resources. I used the official AQA textbook, the CGP guides, um, different websites for online past paper questions and also YouTube videos when I wanted something visual as well. I will leave a helpful list of biology websites in the description box down below, so do check that out. I use quite a few websites like Tailored Tutors, um, alevelbiology.co.uk, um, Physics and Maths Tutor, and some of the other ones I've just gone and found by Google searching, so hopefully you find them all very useful. YouTube is also a really great platform to learn anything, not just biology, and I found it really helped me to visualise concepts like transpiration streams and the immune response. So again, I will leave the names of some really helpful YouTube channels that help me through biology in the description box down below. So the next thing I wanna talk about is past papers. And if you watch my last A-level advice video, you know I think that past papers are the absolute key to success in A-levels. This applies to biology as well. You might absolutely love the subject, have all the knowledge in the world, understand all of the concepts, but if you're not putting what they want on the mark scheme, you just won't get the marks. I liked biology a lot as a subject, but I would get frustrated when I would miss just one keyword out of an answer, which means the whole thing is wrong, even if you perfectly understood what the question was asking and the concepts and everything else as well. The only way that you will really learn how to say things in the specific way that they're looking for is by doing a lot of past papers and I mean lots and lots and lots. I would even repeat past papers, um, do all of the old spec ones as well because it's good practice and lots of questions repeat year on year or are slightly changed. Make sure when you're doing past papers you're not just blindly doing them for the sake of it, actually understand why you're getting something wrong and make a note of it for next time as well. Check what command words are being used, so these are things like describe, show, compare, justify, etc. When you're doing past papers, you also need to understand the difference between knowledge questions and application questions. Knowledge questions are just basic facts that you kind of need to just regurgitate and get right, so things like definitions. These are much easier to pick marks up on, so definitely make sure you're getting the knowledge questions right. And then application questions are where you actually have to apply your pre-existing knowledge to 
different scenarios that you haven't come across before. And these questions are a lot harder, but with practice, you'll identify similar patterns and themes that come up again and again. And remember, all questions are always based around the spec, so they won't be that far out of your scope of knowledge. Something that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about is using the examiner's report. I always think there's some really valuable points in this report. So for example, questions that people are getting wrong consistently and how hard they expect questions to be as well. I think it really gives you an insight into the examiner's head and how they're thinking. I can't tell you exactly how useful it is to the overall subject, but I definitely think it's worth having a read. And one of the most helpful things my biology teacher said to me was you have to treat the examiner like they don't know anything and be very clear and concise in your answers. My next tip is to think about implementing active recall and space repetition into your revision. Obviously these techniques can be used across many subjects, not just biology. So these two methods are actually scientifically proven to be effective in increasing memory recall. And the way that I would do this for biology was using flash cards and past papers and I would make sure to space out different topics on different days. So for example if I had some flashcards on respiration I would do these on day one of my revision and then the next time I do them could be day three and then day seven etc etc. And the idea is to make the gap between doing sets of flashcards longer and longer each time. This also does work with past papers but with slightly longer gaps so if I wanted to repeat the same past paper I would wait a week or two at least between them. Each time you repeat your flashcards or past paper, you're bound to pick up more and more of the answers each time because you're actively retrieving this information and also challenging yourself by leaving more time in between. This actually helps the information to stick in your long-term memory as opposed to your short-term memory, which is what happens when you cram the night before an exam. So for my flashcards, I would try and make these after each lesson using my class notes, specification, textbooks. But of course there were times where I didn't keep on top of this so I had more to do but they genuinely did help me in another way which brings me on to my next point. So I found a great way to use flashcards was actually using them with other people and testing each other on them and doing it in a very interactive way. By doing this I could explain concepts to my friends and it really helped to actually hear things out loud and see how other people think about things as well. If you like textbooks and you want to remember something from it, try taking a paragraph and summarizing it back to a friend. Also, I used my biology teachers quite often to explain concepts to me after class if I didn't quite understand them. And then the next lesson, you can try and explain it back to them as well. Revising with people is a really great way of engaging with the information and having to think on the spot. And I actually found myself associating the friend or the place we had been in with the the concept itself, which was really useful in an exam if I came across a question which I didn't quite know at first glance. I would try and remember, okay, so I spoke about this topic with this friend in this place um, and we talked about X, Y, and Z, and it would often unlock bits of information that I just didn't know I had in my head. So I actually found a line in the specification that said 15% of your marks will come from practical work. 15%, which actually shocked me because I didn't realise it was that high. So definitely do not ignore the practical element of the subject. There are some key skills and techniques that you can only learn by doing the practicals. For example, knowing how to produce dilution series and calibration curves and learning how to calculate the mitotic index. All of these things really make sense when you do them in person. So engage in your practicals, ask questions. Um, your teachers are there to help you. And I actually found practicals quite fun, especially when we did dissection of the heart and things like that. In the spec, it also tells you which practical skills will be assessed in the exams, which is really useful. Similarly to practicals, please don't forget that biology does contain a lot of maths, which I think a lot of people don't realise in the beginning. It can be quite easy to neglect questions with maths, but it's these types of questions that can often differentiate between grades. You can come across things like changing units, areas of shapes, graphs, charts, tables, averages. In the specification as well, down the right hand side, it gives you examples of how the maths can be used in the context of biology. So for example, here it says about algebraic equations, but in the context of cardiac output. Okay, so I did the AQA biology exam board and I want to quickly touch on the paper 3 essay very briefly because to be honest I didn't really think about it till closer to the exams and during the mock time. I really don't like writing essays and I think I was just putting it off for as long as I could really. We did start doing some essays in year 13 in class and we get a title every so often and the teacher would put a timer on and that's pretty much all of the practice I did. I really struggled to do independent practice because 
I didn't feel like I was in sort of an exam pressured environment. I do have some tips for the essay though. Firstly, I would say go and watch Ali Abdal's video on his essay memorization technique. I'll link it below because he goes through some very helpful techniques in remembering lots of content for different essay titles. I was also told by my teacher that wider reading in biology can kind of help to add a little something to your essay as not a lot of people do it. So if you're able to link something slightly outside of the spec, it will be really impressive. Of course, this is not essential at all. I don't think I did this, but it's an option. And I would also say make sure you're linking your essay back to the essay title and keeping it to the relevant parts of the specification as well. It's really easy to go off track in the essay and you will lose marks. So my next tip is to try and keep up the momentum of work throughout the year in order to decrease the stress and panic towards exams. You might find it useful to read ahead for the next biology lesson to see what's coming up and consolidate what's happened in the previous lesson. I didn't do this very often because I was being lazy, but it's a very useful tip. However, I did sit an AS biology exam and although it didn't count towards our final grade because we were the new specification, it really helped me revise and get all my notes together in year 12. Now, obviously there isn't an AS to revise for, so make sure you do consolidate your year 12 work, ideally throughout the year, but if not, then definitely in the summer between year 12 and year 13. This is because there is a lot of content it is manageable, but I definitely felt the jump between GCSE biology and then A-level biology. If you like this video and you want to see more videos on how I got an A-star in chemistry and an A in maths, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you all again in the next one. Bye!